Lesson 64 starts on page 298 and it's about division with two digit answers. Now you've learned how to do division with one digit answers. You've learned how to do division with a one digit answer and a remainder. Now you're going to do division with two digit answers. You won't have remainders on these. These problems are designed so that your remainder will be zero. Let's just do a problem that's a division problem where we have a remainder real quick. So that will help us think about division with two digit answers. Let's do 16 divided by 3. Now remember what we do on these, we try to find the factor that gets us as close to 16 as possible without going over 16. 3 times 5 would be 15, 3 times 6 would be 18, so that's too high. So 3 times 5 is as close as we can get. And so we put the 15 down here and then we do subtraction. 16 minus 15 is 1 and we'd say remainder of 1. Okay, so we're going to do some similar steps when we do division with two digit answers. Look at practice problem A, 60 divided by 5. And so what we do is we just think, well, 5 will go into 60 how many times? And we can do that but what we really need to do is just look at that first digit. If that's bigger than the 5, then we can divide or we can multiply 5 into 6. 5 goes into 6 one time, right? So we could put a 1 right there and do 5 times 1 is 5 and subtract that from 6. And so we'd have 1 and then we bring that 0 that's left in the 60, we bring that down and we put it right here. And so we'll have 10. Now 5 goes into 10 exactly two times and so that's our result is 12. Now let's do 5 times 2 is 10 and put that there and then subtract those two and we get 0 and we see that our remainder is 0 on that problem and so that tells us that our answer is 12. So let's just review what we did here. If this number that I'm circling in red, if that digit right there is bigger than the one you're dividing by, then you can just do a multiplication there. You can say 5 goes into 6 how many times? Just like on any other division problem, you can't go over that. You couldn't say, well, 5 times 2 is 10. That wouldn't work. You have to say 5 goes into 6 one time. And then you do the subtraction there. We put a little subtraction symbol and you it's you kind of have a remainder there you have a remainder of one and so you bring down the next digit in the number under your division box you bring that zero down and then you say five goes into that it's like you have a new division problem and in fact we could even put a little division box around that ten right there and so we can think of that as five or ten divided by five and so we say five goes into ten exactly two times and we can always check our work right on these problems we can check our work to see if we did it right 12 times 5 we can do that multiplication if that equals the number inside the division box we did it right so we do 5 times 2 is 10 1 times 5 is 5 plus 1 is 6 that's equal to 60 so we did do that correctly let's do another one 117 divided by 9. And so let's just think about that. 9 goes into 1. It doesn't go into 1, but it goes into 11. It would go into that one time, right? 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. That's too many. And so we put that 1 directly above that second one because we're working with 11. We don't put it in front of that first one because we're not working with that first one. We're working with both of those digits there. And so we just pretend like we're talking about 11. 9 goes into 11 one time, and so we do 9 times 1 is 9. We bring that down right here, do subtraction, and we have a remainder of 2. Now we bring that 7 down, and we have 27, and so we think of 27 divided by 9, and so we say 9 goes into 27 exactly 3 times. 9 times 3 is 27. Do that subtraction, and we see a remainder of 0 there. And so that answer is 13. We can always check our work. Do 13 times 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Carry 2 over. 
9 times 1 is 9 plus 2 is 11. And so that number is equal to the 1 inside the division box. So that tells us we did the division correctly. Let's do another one. 192 divided by 6. Okay, so we think to ourselves 6 goes into 1. It won't go into 1, but it goes into 19. It would go into that 3 times. 6 times 3 is 18. We do that subtraction and we get a result of 1. And now we bring that 2 down. And now we do another division. We say 6 goes into 12. How many times? Well, it would go into that exactly 2 times, right? 6 times 2 is 12. Do that subtraction and we get 0 for our answer. And so, or not for our answer, but for our remainder. And our answer is 32. Let's do one more. 38 divided by 2. And we see 2 would go into 3 exactly one time. 2 times 2 is 4. That would be too high. And so we put that 2 down here and do subtraction and we get 1. Bring the 8 down. And now we're seeing how many times 2 will go into 18. It would go into that exactly 9 times because 2 times 9 is 18. Now we do that subtraction and we see our remainder is 0. And so our answer is 19. So division with two digit answers, it's kind of like working with problems with a remainder. You get a remainder on your first try, basically, and then you bring down the next digit, and then you continue working on the problem, and you do another division until you get the answer. And it seems kind of like a strange way to figure out your answer, but you can always do multiplication of the answer times the number outside the division box, do that multiplication and check your work. If that result equals the number inside the division box, you know you did your division correctly. Remember we've said before, division is kind of like a find the missing factor problem. Like on practice problem A, we're trying to find 5 times what equals 60. Well, 5 times 12 equals 60. We found that missing factor is 12. Let's do one more problem. Now, which of those three numbers, 83, 84, or 85, do you think can be divided by 3 and not have a remainder? Well, you could go ahead and do the division on those, but there's a very easy way to figure this out, a very simple way. It's just a special property of numbers. If you add the digits up and those digits are a multiple of 3, in other words, they can be divided by 3 as well, then that number the original number can be divided by 3. So let's just do that. Add the digits together. 8 and 3, that's 11. 8 and 4, that's 12. 8 and 5, that's 13. 12 can be divided by 3. It's a multiple of 3, right? 3 times 4 equals 12. So that means 84 can be divided by 3. We can do the division if we want to, just to prove that. 3 goes into 8 two times. We put a 6 there, and we get 8 minus 6 is 2. Bring that 4 down, and we have 3 times 8 equals 24. Put the 24 here, and we have a remainder of 0. 3 times 28 equals 84. So remember that if you want to know something is divisible by 3 or can be divided by 3 with no remainder, add the digits up. If the sum of those digits is a multiple of 3, that number can be divided by 3. That's a very useful thing to know for working with numbers. Okay, well that's all for lesson 64.